It's like these guys run on a clockwork pattern. Controversial album, back to modern rock banger, and here we are again proving that. <laughs> Welcome to a Rhino Does Music, where today we're looking at the 14th Jesus album from Green Day called Saviors. This band has been around the block and back about as many times as they have albums and then some, and the modern form of this band has been a very controversial one from the fan base's perspective. A lot of people will cite 21st Century Breakdown as their last good album, but I think that while that LP served as a good division, uh, division piece for the band's two eras of past and present, it didn't represent a firm split of good and bad instead starting a cycle of something good, something made. The Uno Dos Trey trilogy is arguably the lowest point of the band's modern career, but it was followed by the fiery late 2010s album Revolution Radio. Then we got Father of All, which is another middling album, but now here we are with Green Day showing off the best of their modern vibe, while also taking hints from the good old days. So let's take a look at that. The thing that sticks out the most to me is the overall general punk feeling to it, which I know a lot of people will be quick to dispute, but I feel like the general vibe of songs like Bobby Socks and Living in the 20s are aiming to accomplish that feeling, especially the latter one. The song picks on the similarities between the current 20s and the 1920s, citing similar issues with different names and labels and complementing it with an appropriately punchy guitar drive. Just like how every year since the turn of millennium has been seen as a possible reset point and point towards normalcy and positive, the 20s especially have been rife with issues and problems to a whole nother level, much in line with the era of just 100 years ago, from presidential fuckery to many social and political issues at large. Billy Joel Armstrong also picks on specific topics that always need to be talked about, such as the shootings and climate crises and disasters of the modern era. Bobby Sox is a similar song in terms of punk sensibilities, this time switching out the conventional punchiness for a more down-tuned version and focusing lyrically on the aspect of being ambiguous about their love interests, invoking a non-confrontational confrontation piece largely because of the general public's still all too common shitty feelings about bisexuality and people just wanting to love who they love with a funky little punk rock beat. Which Billy Joe here, of course, could give two shits less about. He's gonna be him, you should be you, why give a fuck? Falling into always similar yet always enjoyable elements from the band, there's a lot of tracks on here that touch on various forms of our country is fucked, here's a little jam about it such as the intro track, The American Dream is Killing Me. The commonly accepted visual of the American Dream is a nice house with a picket fence, kids, maybe a dog or two, but this is not so much a dream nowadays as it is a far-off fantasy for a majority of the country, which the band touches on in strong measure, with lines talking about sleeping under bridges on top of broken glass. It's no secret that the country is a shithole, with thinly veiled bright sides and shortly lived bonuses, but it's also no secret that Green Day thrives when singing about this kind of thing. Strange Days Are Here to Stay is another glimpse of this type of idea, now taking on the general state of the world and its craziness, lack of sense, and what have you. The world is desensitized to a lot of ideas and situations, such as the concept of something as insane as Project Babylon, referenced in one of the later lines in the song and being the name of a proposed mega weapon by an Iraqi leader, to the constant bitterness and uptight nature of those in power or positions of prominence. We're all numb in one way or another, and it's an enduring theme that manages to sound as welcome on a Green Day album as always. It's not all American hay all the time, though. More serene moments come throughout the tracklist, such as with A Father to a Son, a track sung in a manner that rings true with the namesake, a promising confession from father to offspring. Saying that within all the flames and worry that the world provides in constant motion, the son here proves himself as a difference among the frustration. It's a quick emotional moment amongst the many more aggressive and poignant confrontations on the album. This song is also followed by the title track, which is a plea for something better and something or someone to provide a change by way of being saviors to the world on fire. The album's name and theme is clearly communicated several times over with a very welcome Green Day flourish. It's in the album's closing moments, realistically all the way from Strange Days and ending with the final song Fancy Sauce, that I started to realize and connect all the connections from this album to the previously mentioned 21st Century Breakdown, with the themes, album progression, and lyrical messages all resonating or replicating the 2009 album. The structure also lends credence to the comparisons, with the last track Fancy Sauce feeling like a proper goodbye with mediated, stretched out instruments among the very familiar stop and go word by word lyricism and vocal delivery by Billy Joe Armstrong. With this knowledge going back in for a second listen and then some, kept, kept making me appreciate the album more and more for its status as a spiritual successor to 21st Century Breakdown 
the album that I truly believe to be the band's critically best. While you can make a case that it shouldn't take a casual listener two or more listens to fully get an album or enjoy it by extension, I think it's worth the double take for the sake of going in with no clue and then returning with the ideas stuck in your head along with just all the infectious tunes. This album is beat for beat, modern Green Day at its best. Not a single song on here sits anywhere near bad, nor does any song overstay its welcome, even when reaching four minutes or more. My only true complaint is that a few songs towards the middle, aside from lead singles, provide less instrumental nuance than usual. But with Green Day being 14 albums deep now, that's no general reason to use as a lack of wholly unique and fresh takes on the pop rock, punk rock, pop punk representation as a critical point. There are a lot of uh, consistent Mike Dirt chugs and Trey Cool drum fills, and you could argue that it could be better, could be worse with more or less, but I think it's the familiarity and sameness due in part to the 21st century breakdown similarities and other elements that make it so good. So for these reasons, Saviors by Green Day gets an 8.8 out of 10, and that's the review. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Hope you're having a good day. I hope you're staying hydrated. Get a load of America. I'll see you next time. Thank you.